scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. You want to see the glory of God in your life? Haven't understood what the glory of God is? The multifaceted expression of everything that makes God God is His glory. Exodus chapter 25. Now, the way the Bible works is that, as you know, um, God works in types and shadows, similitudes, adumbrations, we call them. That means that patterns are acted out and in those stories or in those scenarios, we can fish out the patterns and now begin to use them. For instance, how many of you know that if I want to reproduce this same church in Lagos, all I need is what? The pattern the architectural plan is that true any architect who is a true architect accredited should be able to produce with 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 digital precision this auditorium so if i want 10 of this auditorium i don't need to carry this building moving around i don't even need to just snap it is possible for the architect to never be here physically and yet reproduce it with uncanny mastery because he has a pattern that means what we should be crying for is not really the manifestation of God's glory. The manifestation of God's glory is an effect. What we should really cry for is to know God and to understand his patterns. So the Bible says, let the wise man not glory in his wisdom. Let the strong man not glory in his strength. It says, let him that glory at glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. Hallelujah. Are we together? Exodus chapter 25. This was the building of the tabernacle. Let's look at verse 9. Moses is now instructed to replicate the tabernacle in heaven. And whilst Moses was caught up, he had the privilege to see, to peep into the heavenly tabernacle. Now he's reproducing what he saw in heaven. But it did not just happen just by his sight. Here's what he said. According to all that I showed thee, after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. My goodness. May God give us understanding in Jesus' name. Do you know what this is? God wants to tabernacle or he wanted to tabernacle with the people. But he said, you must reproduce the environment of the throne room within that space so that i can be comfortable to be with you and not even know the difference whether i am in the throne room or with you now we are not here to glorify satan but let me teach you something that will bless you the devil can never have access to any aspect of your life until through ignorance or deception he forces you to create something in your life that is a simulation of the current environment of the spirit that comes to you watch this if, the, if a native doctor gives you a charm, now you just believe that he conjured all kinds of things. It looks like just a small substance he gave you. What he gave you was the habitation of the spirit whose assistance you are looking for. Now he gives you that thing and he says, take it home. Drop it anywhere. When you drop it there, you now, that pattern you have created starts attracting the spirit component. Are you getting the point now? That spirit comes and he's comfortable to live in your habitation. 
This is the whole idea of idol worship. To simulate a pattern that makes whatever dimension of that spirit comfortable. Now God... <laughs> God is giving Moses an instruction. Moses, you want my presence? You want my glory? Leave the issue of glory. Let me teach you how this thing works in the realm of the spirit. Now I'm going to give you an idea of how the tabernacle in heaven looks like. Be diligent. Look at how he kept reminding him. If it's my glory you want, I must check my patterns first. Now he says, according to all that I show you after the pattern of the tabernacle, he says, even so shall you make it. Let's go to verse 40. He says, and they make, verse 40, 25, verse 40, not 10, 40. Yes. He says, and look, can you imagine? He now comes the second time to insist. And look that thou make them after their pattern, which was shown you on the mount. That means, Moses, don't invent your formula. You will not get me that way. Everything you saw, reproduce it exactly. Now go to chapter 40 and verse 16. Chapter 40 and verse 16. Same Exodus. The Bible says, Thus did Moses, according to all that the Lord had commanded him, so did he. Verse 33. Same scripture. 33. The Bible says, God kept watching. He kept supervising. Moses is getting to the final stage of the construction now. And he reared up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar. And he set up the hanging of the court gate. Full stop. Then the Bible says, so Moses finished the work according to pattern. As a result, 34. The Bible says, then a cloud. Now that the pattern was kept, then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation. And the glory of the Lord came and did what filled the tabernacle next verse it says and Moses was not even able to enter into the tent of the congregation because of the cloud abode thereon and the glory of the Lord filled the temple uh-huh next verse it says and when the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle the children of Israel went onward all in all their journeys but if the cloud were not taken up they journeyed not till the day that it was taken up for the cloud of the Lord was upon the tabernacle by day and fire was on it by night in the sight manifestation now it didn't happen in the realm of the spirit everybody saw it in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys provided the pattern was kept they kept seeing the glory provided the patterns were kept they kept seeing the glory The patterns of God forerun his glory. The patterns of God forerun his glory. A tailor can be given a measurement without seeing the man of God. Let's assume you want to sew a wonderful garment to give Bishop and his dear wife. You do not need to even have the tailor see them. The tailor seeing them is an added advantage. But whether or not he sees them, all you need to do is be accurate enough to get their measurements and you can give the tailor and within days the man prepares a nice dress and literally bishop can wear it without testing it and come on stage if the tailor was that good in keeping the pattern the pattern spiritual patterns are so powerful they control the manifestation of the glory of god behind the strange dimensions of the exploits of the saints a compliance to spiritual patterns there is a spiritual pattern that governs the manifestation of the anointing the anointing does not just happen because the Holy Ghost is there there is a spiritual pattern that governs influence and access people do not just listen to you because you have something to say there is a spiritual pattern that governs the continuity of your spiritual fire Are we blessed so if you want to see the manifestation of the glory of God we must like students of Scripture return to the Bible and find out Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16 will you show us the ancient path 
lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest there is a pattern that turns a disciple to an apostle jesus did not just come and say i hereby make you apostles no as powerful as he is he subjected them through this methodical system of growth everyone priest here everyone reverend venerable and even our bishops here would tell you there was a pattern is that true you cannot become a bishop in the anglican communion for instance without knowing certain things no matter how ignorant you are there is a there is a necessary pattern that must be followed now i tell you the reason why many people in the body of christ and in church and in ministry do not experience the glory of god it's not because god is hoarding his glory no do you know that in john 17 and verse 1 let's read john 17 verse 1 the only way the father is glorified is when the sons are glorified jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and said father the hour has come please read with me glorify thy son why that thy son may glorify thee this is a principle of shared dominion theologically speaking no object glorifies itself you invest your glory in another and the excellence of that displays how you get your glory so the father cannot glorify himself he invests his glory in the son in the excellence of the son is the glory of the father the son cannot glorify himself so he invests his glory in the church so that the church in partnership with the holy spirit brings glory to the son are you seeing how it works now the church cannot glorify themselves so our dominion over the cosmos principalities and powers is how the church is glorified so creation dominion over creation is how the church is glorified as the church is glorified the son is glorified as the son is glorified the father is glorified you know how powerful the son is by looking at the moon the moon has no light on its own but it depends on the sun and there are times you can see the moon halfway it does not mean the sun lost its power is that the moon was shifting away from the sun it's not the fault of the sun there are times that the moon comes close to the sun and you see the brilliance it can turn night to almost look like day so if my life and your life does not capture the full essence of the glory of god it does not mean god stopped being glorious if taraba state and jalingo does not reflect the glory of god all wise we must go back to investigate what kind of patterns are we subscribing to because it is through the patterns listen i learned this years ago because i said there has to be a way to explain these gaps in our christian experience i carried my bible and i read my bible i've had the honor and the privilege of reading this book that I so love with my life from cover to cover many times and I saw the miracles the wonders I was taught this in church again but we never could see it again I saw 3,000 souls saved in one crusade that was unplanned for and yet we preach and at the end of our preaching with lots of obvious sinners only one person perhaps just strolls carelessly and it's clear the person did not even know what he was doing something is wrong with the pattern how about praying for the sick imagine how passionate we pray for the sick in the name of jesus may the lord touch you and you can see that the sick people have faith 
They are coming to your vicinity is already enough that they have faith. But nothing happens. And we live disappointed. I hope you don't feel insulted. We are challenging ourselves. How about the blessings of the Lord? Oh, we speak and we decree and declare, which is truth, that the blessings of Abraham have become ours. We declare that we are the seed of Abraham. And it is true because Galatians 3 chapter 29 or chapter 3 and verse 29 says it. It says, if ye be Christ, then are ye heirs. Is that true? Yes. It says, Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And yet, you find out that a territory can be so ravaged by lack and poverty, including those who stand as priests. How about the prevalence of decadence in the society? Have you seen, respectfully speaking, that the more churches we have in the territory, the more untouched the territory is at all? Whether it is the moral fabric, the spiritual conviction, just pick a believer at random and interview that believer and you'll be left in tears at the end of your discussion. So we need to re-examine the patterns. The problem is not that we are bad. The problem is that the pattern is wrong. No matter how sincere I am now, if you ask me to prepare a meal, what do you love in Jalingo? Choir. Don't embarrass me now. What do you love to eat in Jalingo? Don't embarrass your people. They will query you later on. Huh? Plantain. He said Alejo. I hope I hope he's correct. Let's well let's use up. They are looking at you and saying, Are you speaking on behalf of yourself or on behalf of all of us? Okay, let's use rice for instance. If you are to cook jollof rice, how many of you know that sincerity does not produce jollof rice? I can be a sincere man of God. In fact, I can even have the ingredients given to me free of charge. But that does not guarantee. Then there are others. If you ask me to cook for two or three people, I may get it right. But now you ask me to cook for everybody. This one requires a level of mastery. I can manage and conjure whatever and close the pot for two or three people. But cooking for a crowd, you cannot be an amateur to do that. There are some women here. If we say we want to eat now, you will just tell us, give us three to four or five hours. And we can guarantee that a meal will come that will glorify Jesus here. Are we together? That means there is a possibility that even though we are well-meaning and sincere people, love God with all our hearts, ministry may not work even though we are sincere. You don't have to be fake to suffer. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You can be as sincere. The disciples of Jesus were sincere people. When he went up the Mount of Transfiguration, they saw this epileptic patient and they came as disciples, students of Jesus. They now tried to pray, to do what they were taught. And they were utterly disappointed. They were angry and when Jesus came, they said, what is this? Why couldn't we do this? Can I tell you this? There is nothing more frustrating than loving Jesus sincerely, knowing you are true and your heart is pure, and yet not able to reveal the glory of God to the extent that brings glory to Jesus. Many years ago, I prayed for the sick and nothing happened. I've loved Jesus my entire life. I ministered to people and nothing happened. I read my Bible and I said something has to be wrong. I began to read stories of men and women in scripture and even in modern history. The Bible archives them in Hebrews 11. Time will fail me, it says, to talk of Gideon, Jephthah, Barak. Men who through faith subdue kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions, women who received their dead back to life. And I knew that something was wrong. And I did not want to live in a lie. Making a lot of assumptions, writing books about a concept that has not yet become a reality. Please follow me. And in my desperation and my hunger, one day, 
I had a vision. In that vision, I saw a giant door, very big door that looked like an ancient gate. And then it was zoomed towards me. And I found out that that door was made of many smaller doors. The big door had many smaller doors and they were opening and closing. And every time they opened light, would just come like flashing a torchlight. Light would come out of those smaller doors. And I noticed that on every of the small door, there was one scripture that was written. God was about to introduce me to something. And then the door would open and light would come out of it. And the Holy Spirit began to speak to me. And he said, these doors represent possibilities in the kingdom. The light that comes from it is the grace to defend every truth that you see on that door. That means every truth in this kingdom, if you really find it, there is a grace to defend its validity here and now. When T.L. Osborne found it, he proved it. When Kenneth Hagin found it, he proved it. When John Knox found it, he proved it. The patriarchs, when they found it, they proved it. Today we claim to have found it. And so we gather people like the fig tree. And they come say, now you found it. And we round up by saying, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Very implicating scripture. Do you know what the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is? Then we even say the love of God. And we know that the character of love is that it gives without restraint. Then we even say the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Let it rest with you as you go with your trouble. Goodbye. We recite this every week. We recite this. Then we even add Amen. You know what Amen is? Amen is let it be so. Let it manifest as preordained. That's what Amen means. And so I made up my mind that I would have to become like a spiritual archaeologist to now begin to search these truths. Because if we cannot present the glory of God in its entirety, we are going to lose a whole generation, I assure you. Today there are options. Atheists came out and they said we, be, we don't believe in any God. And they have created a, a semblance of evidences that we are yet to counter. Other religions have come to say, listen, this your Jesus you are speaking about is just fanatism. There are many gods and they've demonstrated that result with their life. A herbalist is there sitting in one dark room and we keep laughing at them and telling members, don't go to any herbalist. And yet the last time the man went to the herbalist, he bought a car in one month. He went to the herbalist, his wife got pregnant in two weeks. He went to the herbalist, he won an election. And then he returns back to church and said, just leave them and stay with Jesus. And they say, I don't have a problem with Jesus. But where is the evidence that shows he's alive? Are we together? I know you may think that you will never dapple your hands into evil until the day life pushes you and you try this in quote the jesus option and nothing happens and you are watching your wife dying and they tell you she has one more week to die this is why many testimonies in church did not come from church people only bring them to church because they don't want trouble with pastors they know where the testimonies came from sorry oh, you asked me to come and speak to you that is why members have their bibles they have charms they have some other books they have some other references and they operate them at random the most important thing is let me give god glory when it is done please take seriously what i'm saying including our congregations I've had the honor and the privilege by reason of ministry to pray for people sincerely and you cannot imagine results are powerful so everybody continues to go down financially 
and someone is watching another person bribe his way into blessings or into into uh, uh, wealth and abundance and yet you are saying listen you can walk in the dignity of kingdom integrity and step into the blessing of the lord and now the person is obeying you as a pastor his wife is suffering the children are suffering he's the firstborn among 12 families sooner or later they will love him and they'll say while you are doing your church thing there this is the reason why when we shout praise the lord people say hallelujah when we say you are blessed they say amen but even us we know they are mocking us because there is a track record of lack of results and evidence to this spiritual thing we do ah may god restore his glory in the name of jesus christ look at jesus who came as the manifestation of the glory of God. A woman had one encounter with him by the well. She was, the impact was so powerful, she could not keep quiet. She ran as a prostitute. Nobody asked her to be an evangelist. Why is evangelism hard today? Because we are not sure of what we are preaching. Evangelism was never supposed to be difficult in the presence of results. How do rumors spread? Rumors spread easily. Do you beg people to spread rumors? Do you beg people to spread bad news? As many as we are in this country, if a prominent man dies in less than 10 minutes, the whole Nigeria knows. How come the gospel has not gone that far? No evidence. No evidence. No evidence. A man will be in his bedroom discussing with the wife and one person will hear and in 30 minutes the whole nigeria has had a discussion and yet the gospel that is preached every sunday openly there are people who have not heard and are not interested and yet churches keep expanding conferences are being organized every week and every time i hope you understand that i'm saying this out of love it's not a, it's not it's not to be sarcastic but it's to call us 21st century end time ministry will need evidences if you really want to manifest the glory of God. I, I, we are diagnosing the problem and I'm showing you the extent of the damage that not understanding spiritual patterns is causing. We may not see it until your child gets up one day and says, you know what? I have watched you. Do you know that many lawless people in our nation and our environment today were children of pastors? Are you aware of that? You look at the American community, respectfully speaking. Many of the lawless people who are the principal promoters of evil and darkness, most of them started from church. But church disappointed them. There are many young people who will tell you right now as I'm watching, it's only my body that is here, my mind is no longer in church. But look at Jesus. He went up the mountain, people followed him. For three days, they refused to go home. He went by the sea, they followed him. To tell you it's not just about Jesus alone. Even the woman herself. She went and said, come see a man. And they, they knew this woman. And they saw the sudden transformation. They said, no, 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 no. We don't believe that Jesus, but we believe you. Let's go. And they came when they sat with Jesus. One service was enough for their transformation. And today we have members 10 years and by the 11th year, you find out they were not born again. It's at the 11th year, they will come out for an altar call. When a guest minister comes somewhere, do you know how embarrassing it is to be that a man has been in the atmosphere, he was chairman of building committee, he was chairman of this, prayer and fasting he attended, is until someone now comes to preach. Then he now comes out. Are we blessed? I tell you what the diagnosis is. We desire the glory. The average believer knows or is aware of all the possibilities in scripture. If I ask you now, does God heal? Please help me. Does God heal? Does God bless? Does he lift men? Can he restore? Does God give speed? Can he give a barren woman children? Can he take the poor and put him in the, in the palace? Can he take someone from nothing and make him a great man? Question. You are aware. You are not in doubt. But why is it not happening? It is painful to know what should be and not have it manifest. He 
is like knowing every restaurant is open. You know where the restaurants are, but you are still hungry. You can even pass close to the restaurant. You know there's food in this restaurant now. They've told you food is ready. They wrote it clearly. And yet you are dying of hunger. In one minute while you are looking at me, can you just talk to the Lord before we continue? Lord, I am tired of Christianity as usual. There has to be something different in this conference. There has to be an encounter that manifests your glory, your glory in a new dimension, in a way that compels all and sundry to glorify Jesus. It says, let your light so shine, not before things, before men. He desires to see your light shine before men. He says that they may glorify your Father. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Are we blessed? Exodus chapter 33. we we'll find somewhere to pray. Exodus 33 and verse 13. We are following a pattern now. Moses is about to encounter the glory of God in a unique way. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in your sight, show me your way. Many people know the scripture that Moses said, show me your glory. But that was not the first thing he asked for. The first thing Moses asked was, show me your way. Why? That I may know thee. Show me your ways. He made his ways known to Moses, but he did not just come. Moses requested and said, I know that your ways are connected to your glory. If I do not know your ways and I do not know you. When Jesus came, here was his manifesto. He says, I am the way. There is Jesus the way. Until you find the way, you cannot find the truth. And until you find the truth, you cannot find the life. The protocol is Jesus the way. I am the pattern that leads you into that reality. When you find that reality, then you can come into experience. I am the way. I am the way. It says, show me thy way that I may know you, that I may find grace in your sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. Uh -huh. Let's read on. It says, and he said, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. 15. And he said unto him, if your presence goes not with me, carry us not from hence. I can preach all night here. A man who can leave ministry to preserve the presence of God. A man who is saying, look, let them say I failed in my assignment, but if I have your presence, I am satisfied. As for me, I believe in advancement, but I rather be purported to be in delay, provided your presence is with me. Look at this. This is already an instruction because many people would give up the presence of God a thousand times to continue ministry. For wherein shall it be known that I and thy people have found grace in your sight? Is it not that in that thou goest with us, so shall we be separated, I and thy people? That means what will be the difference? If I go without your presence, I'm just going to be an ordinary preacher. Wasting my time with jealousy and envy. Fighting people not because I am bad, but because I'm frustrated at my lack of results. Every time you do not have results, the effect is you will be angry at those having the results. And you will look for an excuse, not because you hate them. You have to manage the pain in your heart from your own frustration. The major reason why pastors fight... It's not because they are bad. Everybody who is fighting anything likes that thing he's fighting. But the truth is that it is not through their hands. The scribes and the Pharisees did not hate miracles. They hated the fact that it did not happen through them. And they said, Madam, don't come on Sunday. And Jesus said, hypocrites. If your donkey falls inside the well on Sunday, you know that your donkey has a monetary value. You will enter that well and bring it out. 
Nicodemus exposed all of them. He came to Jesus by night. He said, I'm not ready to be a hypocrite. Rabbi, we know. Forget all the nonsense we are saying in the day. We know that you are a man sent from God. He says, for no man can do these things except God be with you. That means all our talk in the day is just we already know the truth. Are we following? Let's read on. No, not, not John 3 now, please. Go back to Exodus. Exodus, our text, 33. Exodus 33. We're reading now from verse, uh, I think, 16. All right? Let's go to 17 now. 17. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. Next verse. And he said, I beseech you, show me your glory. You don't ask for the glory first. You ask for the ways, the patterns. When the patterns are delivered, you can now say, show me your glory. And then he allowed his goodness to pass by him. And he said, Moses, you can't see the entirety of my glory and leave. But here's what will happen. I will keep you at the cleft of the rock. And I will close your eyes so that when I pass, I will give you an opportunity to see a dimension of my glory. Everybody say divine patterns. Listen, if you learn what I share with you today, in a matter of days and some of you weeks, your life, your Christian experience and your ministry will be a wonder first to you believe me and then to everyone around you people will look at you and say when did Saul also become one of the prophets what happened to you and you will say I came for this Peniel conference you know that Peniel was an encounter isn't it Jacob before Jacob's encounter it was only God of Abraham and God of Isaac we didn't know God of Jacob a man used his life to introduce us to that dimension of God's glory. It was so powerful, God recommended him as the pattern to follow if you want encounters. You see, the way scripture works is that God captures his patterns and personifies them in men. So that every time you are searching for the pattern and you cannot find it, he makes the journey easy for you by referring you to an individual so if you want to know what it means to walk in the blessings of the lord and you don't understand this whole greek and hebrew that paul is talking he refers you according to isaiah 51 from verse 2 to abraham and sarah he says look unto abraham verse 2 and unto sarah that bore you understudy his life how i called him alone how I blessed him and how I increased him. He is my portrait of what it means to be blessed in the kingdom. When you want to study the prayer ministry and your prayer ministry is going down, prevailing prayer that can subdue territories, the Bible refers you to a strange prophet called Elijah. It says Elijah was a man of like passions, but there was a way he prayed earnestly. For three and a half years, he locked the heavens and opened it again. Are we together? When you want to study favor, for instance, you have not seen favor in your life. The Bible personifies favor in a woman called Esther. And he says to study her. How a village woman from Shushan rose to become king alongside Ahasuerus over 127 provinces. Killed her man and yet never held a knife in her hand favor when you want to study deliverance he refers you to Israel in Egypt how that for 430 years a people were in captivity are we together now and then in one night they came out triumphantly with gold with all kinds of blessings the things that are written aforetime, the Bible says, they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope.
So Moses asked for the ways of God. And the ways of God ushered him to the glory of God. Apostle, I'm a great priest. I love the Lord. But I keep having it in my dreams that there is more God wants to do with me. That dream will remain a dream in the realm of the spirit until the Holy Ghost helps you to capture the pattern that brings that grace. You want church growth. You are trusting God for numerical increase. It does not just happen by handing handbills. I assure you and I guarantee you. Human beings are more intelligent than that. There's nothing wrong in giving handbills. But it's more than handbills. Find out what Jesus did that made a crowd to climb the mountain. You know how hard it is to climb a mountain? Yet they climbed and they sat down there for three hours. Members come and after 30 minutes they are yawning and angry and they go out. And after service they sit behind the booth to gossip for three hours. So it was not that they were in a hurry. They had time. Can I tell you this? Every church represented here and every man of God. You can have your auditoriums filled with hungry people who are coming to be saved. Hungry people who are coming to be changed. There are enough unbelievers. There are enough non-transformed believers to fill every cathedral without any sense of competition whatsoever. But you must know what it takes for there is a pattern. Apostle, I want church growth. The pattern is, and if I be lifted up from the earth, the moment you promote yourself and it's all about you, he only draws men when he's lifted up. I want to prosper. I'm tired of failure and hardship. It's not by hustling and hitting left and right. The Bible clearly tells you, except the Lord built a house. It says they labor in vain that build it, except the Lord watches over a city. The watchmen can watch but in vain. He says it is vain to wake up early, to sleep late in the night, only to eat the bread of sorrow. He says, but he can give his beloved sleep. And so he now begins to teach you, there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. He's showing you the ways of God. A diligent hand shall be made fat. He's showing you. He now begins to show you the excellency of wisdom in producing your result. You find out that you are a leader and it looks like your leadership is failing politically, ministerially. He tells you the deficiency is not just the presence of demons. You need wisdom. For he says wisdom is the principal thing. Is it in your Bible? He says get wisdom and in all your getting, get understanding. He says exalt her and she shall promote you. She will put an ornament, a crown of glory upon your head when thou dost embrace her. Speaking about wisdom, he says doth not wisdom cry by me kings reign and princes decree justice he says with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness when you want to know what it means to be successful at a territorial level you don't go to a herbalist you go to job job is the man that personifies what it means to be lifted by god Job chapter 29, you read the first four verses. Job gave us the secret. Are we seeing divine patterns now? It says, Job 29, Job, not John. Job 29 and verse 1. Moreover, Job continued his parables. I'm just showing you some patterns before we just iron things out and pray. All that I were in the months past, in the days when God preserved me. Uh -huh. It says, when his candle shined upon my head and when by his light I walked through darkness. Keep that scripture, please, verse 3. Everybody look at it carefully. This was the secret behind Job's expression. There were two kinds of light that made Job rise. Number one was the light that shined on his head. The second was the light that shined in his feet. The light that shined in his head is for revelation and illumination. The one that shined in his feet was for direction. You don't just need direction alone. You need illumination. Illumination. Elihu lamented and he said in chapter 32, I think, and verse 8 or so of Job. He says, there is a spirit in man and the breath, ruach. The Greek word pneuma, the breath, the spirit, the essence. 
makes men it can give them understanding the fortitude to comprehend hmm. hallelujah are we together yes. apostle my life is slow in ministry and in destiny i'm not making progress and yet you read your bible you see that speed is a possibility is that true that the hand of the lord came upon elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of ahab even down to jezreel so there is a, there is speed but what is the secret to speed is in the bible have you not heard have you not known the everlasting God, the Lord, the maker, the creator of the ends of the earth. He is not weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Then it tells you that even the young men will be weary. The youth will faint. It says, but they that wait upon the Lord. So the secret of speed is to wait upon the Lord. It says, you will renew your strength. You will mount up with wings as the eagles. You will run and not be tired. You will walk and not faint. Apostle, I desire the power of God in my life. We're talking about the glory of the latter house. I desire the wine, the oil for the next season. Let me tell you how it works. The wedding in Cana was the first miracle of Jesus. And the Bible says, this beginning of miracles did Jesus in the presence of his disciples and he manifested forth his glory. What was the wedding about? It was about a feast one two it was about a wine that finished it was limited that was the old wine the wine finished number three it was about sensitivity a few people within that feast said something is wrong with the formation of this feast jesus is in the feast but he's not the epicenter of the feast there are other rulers and they dumped jesus somewhere in the assembly and they came to jesus and jesus said no 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 you people go and do your thing since i am not the epicenter of what you are doing and they went to mary and mary said whatsoever he tells you to do do let me show you how the wine for the end time is formed it first starts with water you want to encounter genuine anointing it will not start with seeking anointing it will start with the word of god it first started with water the water cleanses the water purifies the water gives you understanding while you are engaging the water it will suddenly start turning to wine and by the time you get to the rulers the place of visibility you you started with the word but by the time you arrived at your place of influence you are holding wine the finest of them and the rulers tasted of that wine and say why did you hide this i didn't hide it it only took time to make it Are we together? I pray that God is speaking to us this morning. Now, let me give us one key to manifesting the glory. Just one and then we'll pray and we'll take the other one or the other two in the evening. The first key to manifesting the glory of God is the priesthood ministry. Of prayer with fasting you want to see the glory of God manifest in your life you will have to engage please pay attention the priesthood ministry of prayer with fasting John chapter 12 from verse 23 Jesus please look up jesus revealed something very powerful here and here's what he says and jesus answered them saying the hour has come or is come that the son of man should be glorified so he's talking about glory the very next verse he says verily verily i say unto you except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and die it abides alone but if it does die, it bringeth forth much fruit. And remember John 15 and verse 8. Herein is our Father glorified when you bear much fruit. Herein is our Father glorified. John 15 and verse 8. When ye bear 
much fruit so god is glorified when we bear much fruit and that much fruit happens at the instance of death please listen to me there is a relationship between death and glory this may not be a very comfortable sermon for many ministers but there is a relationship if it is the glory of god you want to host superior dimensions of his power and his grace grace over territories and nations it will happen at the instance of death what is death death is a principle that separates you from the impulses of this life a dead man is not dead a dead man is only separated do we agree with that when you pinch a dead man he has lost the ability to be connected with the impulses that come with this realm even though he's alive but he's alive in another realm no longer this realm set fire on a dead man he has no reaction to it slap a dead man talk about him slander a dead man it makes nothing the moment you are still connected to the impulses of this life that produce jealousy and produce these things is because you are still alive glory cannot be revealed let me tell you this only dead vessels can carry god the weight of god is heavy you can't carry him when you are alive you have to be dead to self dead to the flesh and the priesthood ministry of prayer with fasting many believers only know prayer as a platform for receiving things the primary assignment of prayer is not for receiving receiving is a later part of it the primary assignment of prayer is for transformation are we together until we die to the impulses of this life that come with a plethora of pride please give us luke chapter 9 from verse 28 watch this luke chapter 9 we're about to pray and it came to pass jesus now we're reading from verse 28 it came to pass about eight days after these sayings he took peter and john and james and went up into a mountain to pray so jesus went to pray what happened to jesus when he prayed let's read together in concert one to read and as he prayed uh-huh the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistering this is the first assignment of prayer prayer is not just to receive things prayer is to change you prayer is the system that evolves you into the version of you that can host the glory of god this version of you may not be able to carry the miracle working power even though potentially that in christ you have access to these realities but walking in the manifestation of it will require you to be formed there is a version of you 30 same scripture let's hurry up and behold there talked with him two men moses and elijah as a result of the manifestation the bible says who appeared in that glory and spake of his disease which should accomplish at jerusalem 32 but peter and they that were with him my goodness my god they were with him and yet they were unconnected to it but thank god for the compassion of jesus when they were awake they saw his glory and the two men that stood by him 33 and it came to pass as they departed from him Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it is a good thing for us to be here. Let us make tabernacles. You see how they were thinking? They were thinking from a realm of carnality because they were still connected. Let us make three tabernacles. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. Not knowing what he said. While he thus spake, there came a cloud. And that cloud overshadowed them. And they feared as they entered into the cloud. They feared as they entered into the cloud. Uh huh. And there came a voice out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. And when the voice was passed, Jesus was found alone. And they kept it close and told no man in those days any of those things which they had seen. Look at what happened. Oh, that's that's all right that jesus went to pray and he was 
more focused on his transformation many times when we go to pray we spend hours god give me this i've told you this god people are mocking me and god says the reason why you are feeling the mockery is because you are still alive let prayer transform you and you will find out that you will not even be bothered again many of the impulses that distract us in ministry are proof that we are still connected to the mundane things in this realm you didn't appreciate me and that becomes an enmity of 10 years you didn't appreciate my sermon petty and silly and sometimes even fleshly and carnal things can i tell you this when you take out time to pray for the purpose of transformation something begins to happen to you the hallmark of transformation is not knowledge is love the love of god begins to grow in you and you can look at people and still love even when they are unlovable because something has happened to you by the spirit everyone say prayer prayer with fasting that's true many people pray but they do not fast have you have you noticed that when you are not in an organized and conscious fast you can stay a whole day and not eat and you may not even be hungry sometimes even water but you declare fast and you wake up by 8 and by 11 anything you see around you sweet orange even food for children there is something that is pushing you there I tell you the reason why because there is power when people consecrate themselves when you give God dedicated attention in fasting and prayer intimacy is built when you invest time ask any husband and any wife imagine a husband and a wife that sees themselves only once a year just comes eat her food and is on his way going that marriage will almost be on the way to crashing are we blessed yes. to spend time in prayer lord i love you and you are praying praying out every flesh take away those tendencies lord don't allow me rise in the presence of people before i disgrace myself search my heart oh god this is not condemnation this is God purifying you. He says, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, of clay and of, of wood. He says, some vessels are unto honor. Some vessels are not are unto dishonor. If a man will purge himself, the presence of God. When you set yourself to pray, you are rolling left, right and center in his presence. You are not going there as a man of God. You are saying, Lord, I am here. I am here for you. Here. Yeah. There are great responsibilities. There are sermons that must come out of my encounter. Lord, if you do not help me and show me mercy, I do not have what to say. And whilst you are there, suddenly that glory, you are immersed in that glory. Like, like you know how you marinate meat, women. You just pour oil or you pour something and just marinate it and keep it there for a long time the goal is that everything penetrates through is that true to the very fabric of that meat hmm. do you know there is power in staying with god servants of the living god let's obtain grace to practice this ministry can be an idol it can distract you Especially for some of us that God has helped to be a bit busy. Travel from here to here. MOG. Ministry expansion. Your relationship keeps dying while doors keep opening. I know many, 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 many people. Let me tell you this. I confess to you and I know that many of us are like that. I live an extremely busy schedule. And sometimes I almost want to cry because I, I miss those times when I had the luxury of time where I can lock myself. Now I cannot lock myself. I respond to 800 to 1,000 text messages every day. 
and yet there are some of you here i when i was being graciously ushered i saw some of you looking at me and i could sense admiration oh god let me be like that let me give you an advice let me give you an honest advice let me give you this is this is a, a minister's conference i won't say this in the evening but let me tell you this if you do not love him and his presence more than ministry you will not last not this end time are we together i love him more you've heard me say it i will cancel ministry a thousand times Some of us, the only time we pray is Saturday night. Quickly rounding up. Father, thank you because on Sunday I'm going to stand as you are brushing the notes. No. You see, let me tell you something with God. When you see marriage, am I wasting your time? We're about to pray. When you see a married couple who are truly in love and they love themselves, there is no fake in it. The thing about love is when love gets strong, love begins to invent names that gives expression is that true every husband here has names that he calls his wife when things go bad he starts calling her my wife or the name her father gave her or all kinds of things there are indices that tell you there's trouble so imagine with me for a moment a man who is not used to calling his woman darling or honey and all of a sudden he appears before people and just for the sake of his ego he now starts saying honey and she looks at him and says, when, when did this one start i'm not used to you calling me in the secret place why stand here and say lion of the tribe of judah rose of sharon my jesus and we can feel the strangeness in your communication this is not your language of the secret place The place of relevance is the place of the altar. The place of relevance is the place of death. Any man you see that you truly admire the investment of the spirit upon his or her life, I can tell you, it came at the instance of death. Death to the flesh. Death to the impact, the, the influences But when you die, you get to a realm called Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. He says, and the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who gave himself for me. Then you will see the power of God. Then you will see the grace of God. It takes more than an offering, no? to contact superior levels of God's glory. You can package a seed and we live in a generation that is obsessed with quick, quick impartation. Once people see a man of God who is anointed, people just kneel down with seeds. I'm not saying that is wrong. There is a principle there. Many times the men of God just pray so you stand up and go. Even them, they know nothing came on you. They know that if they don't pray, you will not go. you get to a point where it is no longer your agenda. I'm not just interested in making a name for myself. I'm interested in Jesus being glorified. All I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted. All I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted. Prayer breaks away all those pride that came from our backgrounds. That pride, that passion to prove a point. They must know I'm a man of God. And he says, no, you cannot carry the glory this way. You will never know the tendencies within you. 
until you go to that threshing floor in the spirit and allow prayer to be the, the system that tunes you. You never know pride can be there. You never know lust can be there. You never know all these things are there. Until God vets you, you cannot hold host his glory in experience. Do you know what it means to have access and influence to 30 billionaires and yet you have to maintain integrity and say, I will never compromise to manipulate any one of them. Do you know what it means to carry the prophetic grace? God is opening your eyes. You are seeing everybody's bank account and what is there. It is this lack of unfinished training that is producing the casualties we see in ministry. People graduate themselves in the school of the spirit. They don't wait until they are dealt with. Can I tell you this? In the school of the spirit, there are no graduates. Graduates are rebels. We remain students in the school of the spirit. So whilst we learn and whilst we lead others, we are also students. We are going to pray. You must pray and say, Lord, search my heart and try my thoughts. Before I disgrace and disappoint my own destiny. Some of you sincerely, you desire power, but I know the reason why. The reason is because people have looked down on you and you are tired of mockery. So you are hoping that God will give you power so that you quickly go back to your region and say, where is the one who laughed at me yesterday? Ask Hannah and Penina. For as long as Hannah wanted a child to stop the mockery of Penina, God said that is too small a reason to give you a child. But the day she said, you need a prophet, let my womb, this is not about mockery again. She prayed once and a child came. Prayer and fasting in the presence of God purifies your motif. Why do you want to host the glory of God? Why do you want the power of God? So you sit in front, so your name is on a poster, so partners can come and give you millions and billions. God is not a member of a political party. He cannot be manipulated. He's the monarch of the universe. There is no good father who gives an unprepared son a car or keys to a safe. An heir for as long as he's a child. The Bible says that he differed not from a slave even though he be lord of all. Are we learning something now? We need to humble ourselves and ask the Lord to prune us. It is not that miracle working power cannot come to you. It is not that fame and influence cannot come. These things were destined already in Christ. But not this version of you. It's a version of you that must die. I told God anything at all, anything at all that sustains the power to take your place in my life, may it never come. What do I need it for? Men and women of God, please hear me. As vast as we are seated here looking at me, the Lord is exposing our tendencies to us and saying, Reverend, if you carry the level of glory you are praying for, it may not be safe for you now. So I need that pruning. He that the Father loves, he chastens. The chastening of God is proof of his love. A responsible parent will chasten his child so that he will bear fruit. The Lord told me something years ago and he said, Son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. If you let men see me. And I said, Lord, I have no business building a name for myself. Your name is greater than mine and you've given me already as an inheritance. What other name will be greater? I stand before the God of heaven and I tell you the truth till today and till tomorrow. I have no agenda to build a name for myself, a reputation. Uh -uh. No. No. Please take it high for me. Go. 
Homina Nakane, Homina Nakane, Homina Nakane, Homina Nakane, Yeshua Hamashia, Homina Nakane, Homina Nakane, Yesu, Homina Nakane. Komina na kane, komina na kane, Yeshua Hamashiach, komina na kane. Listen, you want increase in ministry, hand over that ministry to God. Your reputation will kill you if you put it before ministry. Carry the car, carry your reputation. Put it in an alabaster box and bring it before him. Everything. Lord, this competitive spirit, put it in the alabaster box. This desire for fame, put it in the alabaster box. This tendency, put it in the alabaster box. And when you get to his feet, don't pour it, break it. Break it there. And God says, you carried your fame and your reputation and you brought it to my feet so you could go this far let's go to the next level of grace when your motif is purified in the place of prayer you can come and stand before God's people and you will not manipulate and deceive them you see if you have the courage to manipulate and deceive God's people is it tells you how much you are alive in yourself that you know the prophecy you are giving is a lie that you know that what you are saying is not god that said it and you have the conscience to stand and actually do it yeshua hamashia Komina na kane Yeshua Hamashia Komina na kane Everything Take the ministry, oh God I'm tired of the burden of this ministry killing me Take every, it says my yoke is easy The one you are carrying is not him that gave you It says my yoke is easy And my burden is light So if ministry is killing you Someone put that burden on you We are going to have spend five minutes with God. Everyone just crying your heart before your maker. You are saying, Lord, I truly desire to see the manifestation of this glory in my life. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me all of me you have my everything listen many years ago when kaduna in a conference like this and that's how this song came it was a time of consecration and repentance and opening our hearts before him and this song came listen i want you to cast your golden crown forget that you are MOG leave the issue of man of God we respect and we honor your pedigree but in the next five minutes I'd like you to find a corner and we're going to cry before the Lord search my heart I desire to be mightily used by you in Jalingo in Taraba state father some of you are like the prodigal son come to your father in sincerity and repentance how many hired servants he said as my father and I am here feeding with the swine he said I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say father I have sinned against you and against heaven I am not worthy to be called your son take me as one of your slaves but as the father saw him from a distance he embraced him and changed his robe go ahead and pray Please pray. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. 
I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. My life is yours, it's yours, it's yours forever. It's yours, it's yours, it's yours. Whatever you want from me, whatever you want. I surrender. Go ahead. Lay down the pride. Lay down everything. Whatever you ask of me. Whatever you ask of me. I surrender. Whatever you ask of me. Please pray. Pray. Something is happening to you. In this prayer, you will encounter the grace and the mantle for your ministry. I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. You're the King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords your glorious majesty ya bodi na kau sujada ni na kau sarkin salama sarkin aljan Crucify my flesh before Sujada ne nakao Sarkin Salama Sarkin Aljana
acknowledge him in all your ways hallelujah Just one minute. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you So you do what you do We need a move over Chalingo We need a move This is a move We need a move Father, we come to you with hearts broken, hearts repentant, conscious of your love. We ask for your mercy and we ask for your grace. We ask for your grace. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. For some of you, you need to return. No mountain you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Ah. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming out to me. For I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so kind to me. Listen. Listen, in the name of Jesus, 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 I know some of you are crying, but listen to me. This is the threshing floor of Naboth. There is a relationship between death and glory. It is more than preaching sermons. It is more than crusades. It is more than laying hands on the sick. It's a testament of genuine love. Prayer now becomes the platform that changes you. You evolve to that level that can host the grace for nations. The anointing for territories. Seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, he says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us. And he says to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith. He says, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross and even despised the shame. We have to round up. Please listen to me. In the name of Jesus. As you go back home and all through the remaining part of this conference, please go back again and renew your passion for the spirit of prayer and supplication. Any attack on your prayer life, any attack on fasting, it's an attack on the glory of God upon your life. God is not a herbalist. No. I've taken our time and we'll soon be wrong.
we desire to see the fire of revival sweep from city to city in Jalingo. That upon every street, every church, every denomination, every Anglican communion, fire burns upon the altar. Then your political system will begin to come under the influence of that fire. Then your economic system begins to come under the influence of that fire. Then every other aspect comes under the influence of that fire. This is how territories are changed. You don't change territories by changing territories. You change territories by changing yourself. When you are changed, the territory will look like you. The focus is not them. The focus is us. When we are changed, the territory must change. That's what Jesus did. He changed 12 men and the transformed 12 men, now the apostles of the Lamb, alongside others that made the 120, set the world on fire. It was John Wesley that said, set yourself on fire and the whole world will come to watch you burn. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for bringing your word, helping us to understand that your patterns forerun your glory. You have helped us and you have shown us as it was in the tabernacle of Moses that your glory came and rested upon the people, men and women, because your patterns were kept. We confess, O oh God, that we have been careless in complying with your divine patterns. You left us your word. You left us the Holy Spirit. You left us teaching priests to help us. But we have not been attentive. Yet scripture says, my son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my saying. It says, do not let them depart from you. They are life, he says, to those who find them and even health to their flesh. And so, Father, we come with hearts broken and hearts repentant. Show us your ways afresh. Spirit of the living God, we honor your ministry in our lives. You were sent by Jesus, representing the presence of the Father in us and to us and with us. Helping us to conform in experience to the image of the Christ. And we pray that for many of us, we are interested in that school of the Spirit again. Start afresh with us. Build in us divine patterns. Patterns that will help us host several levels and dimensions of the glory of God. And we decree and declare that through our lives and in our lives and from our lives and by our lives, Jesus will ever remain glorified, lifted in our churches, in our territories. Let this be so. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.